Hi there, welcome to Rackheath. It's a little village in the county of Norfolk in East Anglia. And behind me you can see these beautiful picturesque woods. This is actually what used to be United States Army Air Force Base 467 Bomb Group. And I'm here today with a um, special guest, Ivan Barnard, the founder of the Rackheath Pathfinders, who spent the last three and a half years doing some modern day archaeology, digging out what used to be the officer's mess, um, eating quarters, etc., of this very large um, American air base, which was at home to witchcraft, a very famous aircraft. So let's waste no more time. Let's meet Ivan and find out what's been happening over the last three and a half years. Enjoy. Well, welcome Ivan. I can't believe three and a half years ago, we were actually standing here and you were giving me a fantastic tour of the, the, the project. And here we are three and a half years later. And my goodness, what a transformation I've seen already. Where are we standing right now? Right at this very moment, we're outside the blast shelter, which is opposite the White House. If you back three and a half years or so back, uh, there would have been trees growing out of top of this shelter. All the soil was compacted inside. The tree surgeons came in and cut the trees down. And then the volunteers have removed all the soil, estimated at something like 80 tons, and put the embankments back around in place and then grassed it. So it now looks as it did in 1944-45. So in front of me, you can see a very unusual construction and it has a signpost on it, the first Sal House Scouts. So Ivan, can you tell us a little bit more about the people who make up the Ratkeith Pathfinders? They come from all walks of life and all ages. And then on occasion, as in this case, we had the first Sal House Scouts come one evening they had designed this little building, which is called a, a bug hotel. So they'd made this and then they came and they constructed it. And that is something to see very young children actually contributing to the history and the narrative of what was here so long ago. I'm standing in the spot where back in July, Catherine and her entire family had flown over from Northern Ireland as an absolute surprise visit to bring me a birthday present. And I was just blown away. Um, I can't thank her enough and her mother. And now as I turn, we walk towards the beer and wine store. Quite an important area. And uh, here you will see the wood chip, which covers an external um, area between the buildings. And to bring this as a representation of where the squadrons would have uh, their domestic quarters in, in Rackheath Parkland, we have uh, Trevor Wicks has made some miniature Nissan huts each one uh, at a certain angle as they would have been. The first Nissan hut is the 788 squadron followed by the 789 squadron followed by the 790th squadron and we finish it here with the 791st squadron. All four squadrons together. So three and a half years ago, I had the privilege of visiting here just as the project was starting. And what a transformation in three and a half years. We're about to go into what was the dance hall where the US airmen and women would actually relax and unwind. And we've got Ivan here, who's going to share a little interesting story about a reunion that happened in 2023 
September. What was the story, Ivan? Well, the story is simply this. At that reunion, we brought over 36 descendants. Their fathers, their uncles, grandfathers, maybe. But standing where we are now is where the bar was. So, Ivan, the, the bar was where I'm standing right now, yeah? Exactly. Back here in 44, 45, this is where the bar was. So at the reunion, we set up a little bar of our own and we had some lovely beer brewed locally called Liberator Ale, but specially and particularly for Yvonne Caputo, our current president. She told me that her father would never drink warm English beer and he would drink gin and bitter lemon. Yvonne did not know what that was and had never drunk it. So especially for her, I got a small bottle of gin. I got some real lemons, cut them in half, squeezed the juice out. And then in a glass, I said to Yvonne, look, you pour a quantity of gin and we mix it with a bit of lemon. And that is what your father would have drunk. And she did. <laughs> and I have to say, there were a few tears and uh, Kirk, her husband said, well, it's the third time you've made her cry by these memories. You have a friend for life. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. So I'm just looking behind me, or I'm sorry, behind you is the first fireplace that you showed me three and a half years ago. Yes. And then over this way, if I turn the camera behind you is the unknown second fireplace. Is that right? Yes which we have got currently covered until we restore it. Excellent. All right, let's see some more of the site. So another nice touch to the project is the making of these authentic looking military signs. So ahead of you, you can see the officer's mess. Over there, you can see kitchen. And behind me is the beer and wine store. And ahead, in the distance, is the Officers Club. These were made by Trevor Wicks, a member of the Ratkeith Pathfinders. And they look absolutely fantastic. There's six signs throughout the site. You'll see them through the video. As I leave the Officers Club, I'm now entering the Officers Mess. And that would have been a dining hall uh, where 120 would have sat at one time. But to give a little bit of rem uh, representation uh, of the walls around us, this would be a, a Nissan hut, of course. Um, again, one of our volunteers has very delicately and woven uh, with all the spare branches that have come from the trees, if they've fallen or have been taken down, and woven that into a low wall and there's various examples through the woodland where this feature has occurred looks looks really cool so this is all wood that's been cleared from the site or naturally fallen off trees indeed yeah and that actually forms the boundary of what the nissen hut so it gives you a scale of what size the building it's actually a big space wasn't it it is yeah Shall we walk over to the memorial? We will indeed. So on our way to the memorial, we're going to stop off here, which would have been the dining hall. And what's strange about this area is we have a platform, a raised platform of a building that sat about a metre higher than the rest of the building with stairs or steps either side. So Ivan, can you tell us more about what you have learnt about this area of Site 6? One strong theory that has been put forward is it was the pay office. It would be a one-way system, so you would come in one end of the building, get paid and come out the other. And bearing in mind, there'd be almost 3,000 personnel eating in the area 
per day, it could be a very convenient place. But somehow it doesn't seem the right place for a pay office. Other than that, we have no idea why you would build a base of a building almost a metre higher than anything else around it and have a one-way system through it. The basic construction of this uh, odd building is a brick wall all the way around, four and a half brick wall, uh, but there are four positions, one, two, three, four, where a brick pier would have come up, so it would be quite a substantial uh, wall and quite tall. We know it had a, an asbestos roof because we have a, a very high definition aerial photograph of the area. Uh, once they had built the retaining wall all the way around, that was then packed with uh, soil and rubble and more rubble until they built it up to the base, which was then concrete. Interestingly, there is a very sizable reinforcing bar here um, very uh, very large it appears also on the other side now it might not be for reinforcing it could just be the fact that there's another bit of rubbish there's a bit of metal Th throw anything in to build the level up before you concrete it um, we're on the trail of a record drawing for this building and uh, until we actually receive it if it still exists um, we're left in a bit of a limbo so a mystery indeed ivan do you want to lead the way to the memorial yes indeed we'll go back this way another new addition to the site is adjoining the site the new development and in front of me you can see a cycle path walkway which was installed by the builder and this actually takes pedestrians and cyclists through site six and in time there'll be signage which will take the cyclists straight ahead and where Ivan is standing another signpost which will take pedestrians into the nice woodland trail into the actual site six itself. So let's continue, we'll walk on to the memorial. So here we are virtually at the end of the day with the sun preparing to set, casting some nice shadows and a warm glow. And we're in often called, uh, some people call this the memorial garden, some people call it the theatre garden, uh, some people call it the chapel garden. And the concept of that was basically that the, the building behind us there uh, a new building was actually built on the base um, of the theatre and back in 44-45 they shoe a film in there starring uh, Barbara Standwick and it I can't remember the name of the film offhand but it was the world premiere of that showing and then behind me there beyond there in that part of the woodland was where the sergeant's mess was so on and so forth but this little piece um as i say sometimes called the theater garden uh other people call it the chapel garden and that is because post-war that building there uh was used as rackheath church right up until about 1958 when they built the new church on south house road it's uh, a glorious spot to sit and you do find people sitting here quite regularly but it's a it's a nice ending to the day because it, it has to be now whew, um, something of an emotional, personal thank you to the, to the numerous volunteers. And I'm not going to attempt to name them because I will never, for, never remember all their names, but their faces are ingrained in my mind. 
uh, forever. Um, so, but it isn't just the volunteers, it is the different age range uh, and the skills that they bring to the site on, on quite a regular basis. Um, mixed in there, in the, in the past year, we've had uh, three uh, youngsters and, uh, doing it for their Duke of Edinburgh Award. And they all achieved that, and it was great just signing their piece of paper at the end of that. Um, mixed into that from time to time, we have army cadets, and it's great to see young people wanting to know what actually happened here and to keep uh, alive the history and the narrative. And I need, I need to emphasize that the, um, the bond of friendship formed 80 plus years ago is still as strong, uh, not just in America, but this side of the pond as well, uh, that deep bond of uh, friendship. So uh, I guess that is why we do what we do. Thanks for watching.